Everything that we consume was produced by human labor, human hands. Whether it's farm workers who are working in fields, women working at sewing machines in Bangladesh or Indonesia sewing clothes, people who are just like us. The same things that we want for ourselves, we should want for them. The biggest trade agreement that most people know about is NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement. This is a pact that was supposed to create jobs for American workers by opening up a new export market in Mexico. And it was supposed to raise living standards in Mexico by giving people new jobs and things of that nature. Instead, what we saw were hundreds of thousands of American jobs shipped to the Maquiadoras along Mexico's northern border. And America has lost about 700,000 net jobs. There was this wave of subsidized corn and other grains from the United States. All of a sudden, it was more expensive <laughs> to actually grow and sell your crop uh, than it would be to buy it. That forced literally millions of farmers off their land. These are really actually historically very stable communities. Sin el hecho de que no puedes competir con compañías gigantescas, con transnacionales. You know, these communities were not sitting at the table when the Mexican government and the U.S. government decided that it was okay to let Archer Daniels Midland dump corn in Mexico at a price that was so low that those Mexican farmers were going to go broke. Porque lo que más afectó fue a los negocios pequeños, a los rancheros pequeños, que son los que menos tienen y son los que más atacaron. ¿Por qué? Porque no tenían opciones. A lot of the economic and environmental problems we're dealing with right now are a direct result of the North American Free Trade Agreement and similar trade deals. The Trans-Pacific Partnership would expand those economic and environmental problems massively. This is a massive deal that covers 40% of the global economy with the potential to impact easily half the countries of the world. The Trans-Pacific Partnership is going to affect our economy, our environment, our public health for generations to come. It's sad, it's sad to see this eh, el abuso que hay de empresas grandes que tienen el poder de ponerle precio a tu trabajo. A farmer that has an acre of land to plant a crop, it costs 80 cents to produce a pound of coffee. Sometimes the price will go down to 30 cents. I fear that if the morality is not brought into the heart of the global trade, it will be human collapse. From the 90s to the present, when factories move out of the US, it goes somewhere else and enslave the people. We have to think of a way to transform the industry. We have to use business principles for good to prove to the world that you can do business in a just way. You can do business to create more equality for people. Free trade and fair trade might sound similar, but they're very different. Fair trade is a movement of people, farmers, consumers, businesses, that aims at changing the terms of trade so that they become more dignified, more just, more equitable. For us, it means that the farmers are democratically organized and have control over their lives. They own that organization uh, and they have much more leverage. The pricing has to be fair. The fair trade price sets a floor price, so it allows farmers to know from one year to the next what they can guarantee that they will make. They will never sell their products below the threshold at which they would not be able to make a decent living. And that's very reassuring. In addition, there's a community development premium or a fair trade premium, usually 5 to 10 percent of the cost of goods that is paid into a fund that is democratically administered by the farming community for projects like clean water, sanitation, healthcare clinics, schooling. If people get fair wages for their traditional knowledge, then they're more likely to preserve those knowledge. I think a lot of times fair trade is, is a lie. Fair trade, like organic, has been completely watered down and, and the essence of it has been taken over by people who are just trying to market things at this point. But underneath that, there are still people doing the actual real thing. The thing that you want to do is look beyond that product and say, am I buying from a fair trade company or am I just buying a fair trade product from a conventional company? Researching the specific brand, finding out if they are talking about their farmers, they're talking about the people that are making their products on their website is a really great start. A dedicated fair trade company is 100% fair trade. All their major supply chains are fair trade. In fair trade, we, we don't sell and buy. We build long-term partnerships and friendship and commitment. You've been growing organic cotton for four years. How has that changed? Has that helped you? Are you making money on it? Enormemente, sobre todo, que nos ha sacado de la pobreza. Bravo! Thank you. Thank you very much.
Thank you. With fair trade, you can place a vote with your dollars every day about the type of world that you want this to become. Not the world that we are, but the world that we should be. Consumers who care and want to make a difference beyond the really important step of buying fair trade products, a couple of simple steps can go a long way. I think we need to, number one, remember our history. People's movements have defeated similar corporate power grabs disguised as trade agreements. Call your congressperson and let them know that you're concerned and, and let them know why. We're already hearing from uh, members of Congress that they're receiving hundreds of calls and thousands of emails. If enough of us get on the phone, send emails, it makes a real difference.